and welcome back to my corner. So this video is going to be part two of James Kelman's A Disaffection. Now, um, I've done the first part when I was part of the way through the book and that's how I like to do it, just to get a good sense of what the book is um, and how the writing style is put out um, and then, you know, hopefully get you to go get the book and uh, read it kind of along with me. Now, it took me a bit longer than I thought to get through this book um, and as you can see um, it's got lots of quotes that I have uh, marked out in it and um, this is for my uh, university work um, but I just wanted to finish my video and kind of share it with you so what can I say about this um, as I said in the first uh, video it's very very intense reading and I don't mean in the fact that it's um, got an intense story. Um, it is written in a way which makes you have to stop and kind of go back and like it tricks your brain into thinking you're reading the same line twice. But in fact, the way that this is done, you are essentially in the mind of a 29-year-old man who has a master's degree, who's from the east end of Glasgow, he's originally working class and he's struggling with the fact that he's a teacher and that he's part of the middle class and he doesn't know where he belongs. Uh, Patrick Doyle isn't happy per se. He's also well educated to the point where he's obsessed with people like Goya and Holderin and Schopenhauer and a few other people like that. Lots of philosophers, lots of great writers um, or writers of, of classical importance or impact. Uh, the, the thing about this book is that there is no real overarching kind of storyline. Like there's no kind of story arc in there. There might be just a little bit because you're following Patrick over a span of time and his kind of descent, his continuous descent into a kind of madness that he's got going on. Um, He's looking around and everyone's kind of moved on. Like he has an older brother who's married to a wonderful wife and like Patrick loves his sister-in-law. They can talk for hours. Um, they have children, a wee boy, a wee girl. And the mother and the father are, um, his mum and his dad are working class people within Scotland. And um, there's a different uh, kind of, viewpoint this gives, where he clearly, Kelman clearly makes a distinction between this class and that class. And they're, they're significant viewpoints. Where Patrick is, albeit very unhappy with his job, he likes his job because he gets to teach all these kids in high school uh, from around the ages of 12 to 18. And um, he himself um, is probably not an appropriate teacher, um, he puts out a lot of anti-right wing rhetoric and, and basically saying you're part of the system that's going to teach you to think so that it would increase your chances of coming out of the working class and working your way up the social economic ladder. Um, this is often called, like a, within the UK, at least a meritocracy, where you earn your merits and you earn your way into higher paid and more respected professions, much like teachers or doctors or politicians. Well, maybe not politicians, but politics in general. Um, and then you've got the factors of he's struggling with being alone and feeling so isolated even though being around these people and the people he works with the other teachers um and he's obsessed with like football like second tier a uh, second division scottish football um and if you don't know what that is please go check it out uh it's not a youtube channel or anything it is just the small football teams that you haven't heard about, or soccer teams, if you're American or from another place in the world that doesn't call it football, that's fine. Um, we we call it football, and in Scotland these teams are kind of more well known. But the the bigger teams are the likes of Hearts, uh, Rangers, Celtic, etc. Um, but this book focuses on smaller teams, like from Yorker and St Mirren and 
um, it really gave me vibes of my father, <laughs> like my dad. He's a he's a Glaswegian and um, just real working class kind of stereotypes. Like you're in a football, you're you're pacified. You you have to stay in your job because you've got a job. Because if it wasn't you, it'd be someone else, and you should be thankful for that job. Where in the the middle class, you have this kind of drinking in posh bars, like the art centre with your friends or your, your colleagues after a work a day. Um, you've got enough to afford a car. All you need to worry about is paying your mortgage. The fact that you even have a mortgage. Um, just this, this kind of takes the struggle out of it where you're in working class. There's always this kind of, you're low on this. You don't know where you're going to pay your gas bill or your electricity bill or have groceries and things like that. Or... Um, be able to get to an interview because you've not got enough money for the train or things like that. Now this book, as I said in the last video, was written in the 80s and a uh, fun fact about this book is that it won the Man Booker Prize. Now at the time, the standard was, as I said in the last video, that um, everything conformed in literary, literary conformed, um, conformed to an English, uh, standard English kind of dialect where there was no accents there was you didn't uh, make up words or put in regional aspects of a certain populace or whatever you just kind of got the gist of it but not all of it when this won the booker prize right two of the judges were so disgusted that it got what got the prize first ever scottish person to get the man booker prize that they immediately immediately resigned from their positions um, there was a literary uproar about it because the, the, the style of it, there's no um, distinction between narration and the voice of the person or uh, Pat's inside voice um, or when he's talking to other people. There's no quotation marks to, to, to differentiate that when there would be in, say, other books. Um, it's a continuous stream of things and very few page breaks as well. Uh, the page breaks usually signify a change of scene or a change of the day or like uh, like in the morning or whatever. Um, the long bits of this, it's all smashed together. It's basically you being inside Pat's mind. And it's not just Pat that's speaking, but it's other voices in Pat's head, different parts of him. The intellectual who has a master's degree, right, with honours, and, and this person who's isolated and suicidal, who's lonely, um, who fa who's fascinated and, and, and obsessed with his other co-teacher, Alison, even though she's married, um, even though she, she likes him, but I think it's more pity than anything else. Um, the, the, it's so hard to read and dense but it's worth it um because he's, he's not only talking about his life but he's talking about the wider society and how he sees things um and there's this passage where he's talking to his sister-in-law and she's like you're never happy you know you've got a job you went to university like what you doing pat you know what you doing and uh He's like, well, I was forced to go to uni because that's what the parents wanted. That's what my brother wanted. I didn't necessarily want that, right? Um, and he, he he thinks it's all a big lie and a big coup just to keep the system going. Um, but she rightfully points out, like, you've got a job that pays you well more money than my husband will ever get. So Pat's brother, who's unemployed and mostly continually for one reason or another. You can't have a continuous job. Um, and then she also points out that his dad, uh, Pat's dad, that um, he's been in the same job for the last 30 years, 30, 40 years. He hates the job. He hates it, but he sticks with it. And he smokes like a chimney, even after having three strokes. Three. And they all detest that fact. But the dad's just so well into his class system that he does not want to leave he can't leave because that would like uh, jeopardize their livelihood um the other striking thing about this book is it's very political 
this very political um and even it's political it's sociological it's it comments on so much um mental health um how hard it is to talk to someone anxiety paranoia i mean throughout the book he thinks mi6 has fallen in everywhere no matter where even the most mundane places um it's A real hard piece of work. I can only imagine James Cameron took quite some time to get this together. Especially because when you're in um, Pat's mind, he's repeating things. Like, um, he'll be thinking a long stream of consciousness. He'll be daydreaming about something and then abruptly, abruptly come off and you hear one voice go, fuck off. And the other one just, just fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. And you'll get all those things. There's a lot of profanity in this book. Um... And if you want to know a bit more about Scotland in general, maybe this is about out of date for more standard times, for, for more modern times, like right now. Um, but it is worth the read. Um, does it end the way you think it ends? No. <laughs> um, does it have like a massive um, climax? No. And I think that's the point. I think that he is trying to um, really hammer home how stupid some of the tropes are within prose and in novels and writing, at least within that time. And you can say maybe that he's a postmodernist, um, that James is a rebel against the literary establishment that is housed in England. Um, and it, true enough, if we didn't have James Kelman, then you wouldn't have great writers like Irvin Welsh. That's where Irvin Welsh kind of gets his inspiration from. We wouldn't have such great films like Trainspotting or or Filth because uh, uh, if it wasn't for James Kelman. The impact of this man on Scottish um, writing is is endless. Um, and for me as a writer, I mean, that really solidifies if I want to write in a specific way, then I can do that. I will do that. Um, if I do not agree with something, I will, I will show that I don't agree with it. Um, he's put together something that I've personally never read before, and I definitely will be seeking out more of this when I've got the time. Um, really would recommend this, or if you find somebody that I don't know needs some inspiration or needs a way to see themselves, if they're an overthinker, if they're paranoid if they've got anxiety or they've got loneliness and or if they have seem to have everything but they're never happy i, I would suggest strongly that they read this book uh this reminded of my, me of myself of uh, my my father and a couple of other people that i know just all mashed together in one character um and i don't know if that's because i am scottish or uh, i think there was different aspects and i think anybody um we really, really get to this book. It is a slog. It does take a while to get through. Um, and it does become like a labour of love. Uh, I would definitely, definitely recommend you going to get this on Amazon or your local bookstore um, or even one of the big chain bookstores, wherever you are, Barnes & Noble or uh, Waterstones in the UK. Uh, but definitely go check this out. It's so worth the, worth the read. Uh, I cannot express my gratitude for being uh, on the course that I'm at in my uni and then giving us this as an example of revolutions of the word because this is definitely a revolution and it's a revelation to me as well and it also defies my way of reading and my way of writing as well. So, uh, there's going to be a stream on uh, very shortly. 
or in the future if you've just watched this video, um, go check out my Asking Questions playlist. There'll be an interview with uh, J.R. Rowley. He's known to help a lot of YouTubers uh, around in the community and I'm getting the blessing uh, to interview him. Um, also, go check out my GoFundMe page for Connor Thrones. It's down there by my book, which is down there. There's the US link and there's the uh, UK link. Make sure you click on the right one. And if you don't live in any of these areas, please do click on uh, to Amazon and type search the book Honest Poetry by Lauren Cullen and also very importantly uh, Sunday there's a special stream kicking off and I hope you can all uh, go set your reminders and join me then and I have been Lauren and this has been my final part of my review for James Kelman's um, A Disaffection. Please do go get it or go look out more Scottish writers. They are an important part of our society's important part of the world and they give so much. Um, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.